Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of TCG Talk, back today with another video, and in today's video we're doing another deck tech. Uh, you all in my last video recently saw the Viscerai deck tech, and now we're going to be doing Ice Lexi. Um, if you want to join the discussion on some of the videos that are coming up and kind of give your input and also just, you know, be a part of a really good community, definitely join the Discord down below. We have over 150 members now, whether you're a brand new player or a seasoned player, doesn't matter. Join the discussion, really have some fun, uh, we have a good time in there, so yeah. Uh, but yeah, going into this deck tech, this is one of the harder deck techs I made for like my like offshoot heroes that I play. Like obviously I mainly play Ninja. I'm known for Ninja, but I do enjoy playing like Viscerai, Briar, and Lexi. And this one was the hardest one to build because with Lexi, there's a bunch of different ways you could go about it. And like you could run the Fuseless build with Ice Quakes and like try to just, you know, create disruption when you can, but really have a little more gas. Or you do like a hybrid S build like this one. Um, I decided to go with the hybrid esque build and kind of play off some of the principles that the previous build had with like Yuki's list and then kind of put my own spice to it. <clears throat> so we'll go through this. This is definitely a first iteration for me, but hopefully it gives you a good start on where my head's at with the build. We're running the same equipment suite as like the previous list ran. Um, the one kind of point of contention I had was like, do you run shock charmers? Cause uh, the one thing I like about shock charmers in like this, like heavy aggro meta that we're about to go into is you know, if you don't have shock charmers, if I'm presenting like a blizzard bolt that's fused, right? And I'm going to present one frostbite. If I don't have shock charmers, like if you're five, you can be like, okay, I'll just pitch one to play Roman Renegade. Like it's a minor annoyance, but it's not insane, especially if, if you have a blue in hand. But with shock charmers, you're really going to make it to where it's like, okay, if he has two floating and he has a blizzard bolt and I don't block it, he could just shock charm it. Now I have two, two frostbites, right? Or he shock charmers twice and I have three frostbites. So, there's definitely maybe something to be said about shock charmers and putting it in, but overall, you know, it, I'm not hundred percent sure, um, you know, what the best play is overall, but we'll have to see, but going into the deck, I have 24 arrows in here and then I have 19 non arrows in the main board. So 53 cards in total. Um, I'm looking to have around 33 arrows in total once I side things in, uh, but for the arrows, nine blizzard bolts for disruption, pretty obvious. Um, being able to play this off like an ice quake, like you reveal ice quake, play out ice quake, play blizzard bolt. Then all of a sudden, like counting the blizzard bolt hit, they're going to have three uh, frostbites. And at red, it's coming in for eight uh, with red ice quake and red blizzard bolt. So it's really nice. So a lot of the decks right now are not going to like frostbites like prism and like um, uh, Briar and Fi and Katsu and all this like really kind of you know, decks that really rely on really tight uh, pitching ratios and stuff like that. So really good for that. Running six Bolton Shots. Bolton Shots is such a good value <laughs> card in Lexi. Giving a plus one on hit reload. You're always going to get this plus one because it's going to get go again. So, you know, the red comes in for five. Um, one for five. Yellow comes in one for four. Just really nice. It helps facilitate other turns really well, especially when you couple it with like Bullseye Bracers. Um, depending on like how you sequence, you can play out a lot of turns. Like off of Art of War, Bolt and Shot, Bullseye Bracer's turn, you can deal some insane damage. Um, other arrow is Endless Arrow. This is really good against most all decks. It's just automatic include. It's really fun against Jeremiah because you can give it, go again, hits a Dragon Ally for four, automatically goes back to hand because it hit, uh, and then you play it again. So even if you only have one Endless Arrow in hand against a Jeremiah, you can play it out twice most of the time if they have a Dragon in play. And then I replaced Pathing Helix with Flake Out just because I want a little bit more Fuse, maybe trying to play off Eisenhow really well, but well, it remains to be seen what happens with this card. I just want a little bit more Fuse in my main board, so I put in Flake Outs. Um, and then the final arrow I have in the main board is Frostlock. Um, my sideboard arrows, kind of going into the sideboard, I have 12 sideboard arrows in right now. Against aggro, like I said, I'm, I'm putting in nine arrows for the most part of most, most games to go up to 33 arrows. So against aggro, I'm putting in all six chilling ice veins and then probably most of the time sleep dart because a lot of the aggro decks rely on their hero ability with Briar getting go again off her aura, off her lightning tokens, and then with Fi having draconic links um, and even Katsu being able to tutor, it really like hurts them really bad. Um, against Prism, is the other kind of meta hero right now. I'm putting in fatigue shots because it helps make her heralds a little bit less scary. Um, then definitely putting in sleep dart uh, as well so she can't put something in the soul and then maybe like one of the red chili and ice veins. Chili and ice veins don't hurt her as bad, obviously, but it is what it is. And then Bravo, 
Um, definitely a sleep dart, so you can't give things dominate, uh, fatigue shot, and then probably the chilling ice vein. So that's where those are at. For the non arrow attacks, um, we are or not attacks, non arrow cards, excuse me. Uh, we have the six ice quakes, nothing's changed there, just really good value from those cards. Three of a kind, Art of War and Rain Razors, nothing's changed with these three, all staples. Um, I think Art of War is still needed because we're still gonna have a heavy Briar meta, a lot of Fi. Even a little bit of Katsu. Uh, it's just you're going to want to be able to keep up with those decks with Art of War. And it's just really good for that. Um, and then, excuse me. Uh, the other things that haven't changed is we still have Channel Lake Frigid. Obviously, it's a really good three block blue that obviously has its own good effect on its own. And then Polar Blast and Winter's Bite haven't changed. The Uprising cards that we put in are two Arctic Incarcerations. I only put in two because this card doesn't have Go Again. So the only time you're really going to play this card when it's not being used for pitch or fuse is like at the end of a turn. Like if you only have like one arrow or something and you can just play this out for zero and give them another frostbite. This is honestly more of a Icelander card and something that could be subbed out in the future. But initially I want to try it out see how it goes as another fuse mechanic. Well, wow, you only all of a sudden really got a fuse mechanic. Um, and then just an added bonus. So you have to absolutely play it. And then Eisenhower, uh, we I've thought about playing this at yellow too, but initially it's just going to be blue. This is really great out arsenal, right? You play it, you you reveal this, giving them a frostbite, you play this for one, and then you play like a blizzard bolt fuse or something like that. And it's really nice because before the blizzard bolt even attacks now off that turn, you've created three frostbites and now you've put them in a really weird spot. So it's really good at blue. Um, I really enjoy it. And you just use it for pitch if you absolutely need it. But there is something to be said about putting this in for yellow. Maybe instead of Arctic Incarceration Blue, you do like two yellow Eisenhouse, but we'll have to see. In the sideboard for cards that are not attacks, Hypothermia is just amazing, and there's so much of the better right now. Prism can't give her auras go again. Briar can't give things go again with her lightning tokens. Uh, Phi can't give things a go again with Ember Blade or Draconic or anything like that. Uh, there's just so much good in this card into the meta right now. It's actually insane. Um, how good this card is into a lot of the meta decks. Um, even Katsu can't give things go again, or they can't gain go again, right? Um, and remember, it says attacks you control can't gain go again. That also means things that say give go again or gets go again or whatever. It, it makes the same thing. Um, it doesn't have go again itself, which is really funny. So you're going to have to play this at like the end of your turn, basically. Like maybe you use it for fuse off of one arrow, and then you play it kind of slowing down their turn. It's going to come in against a lot of the aggro decks and prism. Um, then you have channel bleak expanse, uh, which is really good against any card that any deck that wants to fuse. So Briar, Lexi, Oldheim, all won't be able to fuse cards, which is really useful. Um, they also can't reveal cards like Oldheim can't use his defense reaction or he can't use defense reaction. I'm sorry. He pitches for that, but he can't use it to fuse like Oak and and stuff like that. Apologies. Um, it's also good against a lot of the aggro decks right now because they can't draw cards. They can't reveal from belittle and like Katsu can't search his deck, um, you know, and stuff like that. Phi can't search his deck for Phoenix Flames. Just overall a really good card that's going to be side into a lot of things. Um, and overall, you know, just, just really, really good. And since we have 19 um, cards that are not arrows for the most part, we want to get up to like 27 ish for them. Really? It really depends. Um, Maybe a little bit less, uh, obviously, but we have to see how kind of that goes. Um, so it goes again against a lot of stuff. Then we have the lightning presses. This is good against like Oldheim. It's good against uh, other aggro decks for being punished for trying not to block us out. Anything that's really trying to stall us out a little bit will be really good against as well. Um, just overall really good. So this is what I have right now. The main weakness to this iteration of the deck is really... Uh, Nolrun. I only have Nolrun boots in right now, like Nolrun one, and then Bullseye Bracers making it Arcane Barrier two, which isn't bad. Uh, but overall, like Icelander, I want to at least have two so I can prevent some stuff. But it, you know, it's just Tunic is so good in this deck that I would have to run Nolrun Robe to run AB three, and then it's like, how much power am I losing by not having Tunic on key like Art of War turns? It really remains to be seen. And you're already losing Snapdragon Scalers. So it's a little bit interesting with that. Uh, I think in Kano, you definitely run this Icelander. Initially, I'm going to run AB2, see how it goes, and then like test AB1 into it. Um, again, this is kind of like the most like experimental deck of the like the three, like Viscerai, this, and Briar. This is the one I think will change the most. 
Um, but it's a good initial list that I'm comfortable with, uh, kind of running and seeing how it goes. Um, but yeah, overall, really enjoying the list. Really like having fun. I think Ice Lexi is in a really good spot in the meta. Um, I think she does really well into a lot of the aggro decks. She can do well in the Prism now um, because the Prism has to kind of prepare for other things. Her worst matchup in Starvo is gone and Chain is gone. So overall, just just really good uh, into most of the meta. I think she's a sleeper for sure. Her and Viscerai are the two most slept on decks right now, which is why I did deck techs on them. Um, but any Lexi players out there, let me know what you think of the list. I am no Yuki Lee Bender, so please, uh, any suggestions is welcome. Uh, I definitely enjoy playing Lexi, but I wouldn't say I'm the expert on Lexi. I think I'm decent at Lexi. Um, so, yeah, let me know what you think. Uh, join the Discord below if you have any comments. Like, Let me know what you think in the Discord. Um, please leave a like, comment, subscribe if you want to. If not me, go to our creator. Uh, do it for them so we can get more people seeing this game, and hopefully I will see you all next time on TCC Talk. Thank you all so much.